Yes, hello. Uh, Hi. Uh, uh, yes, hello. Welcome back, everyone, to ESA Summer Online. Uh, I'm Shadow Frost. I'll be donation reading for the next few runs. Uh, we are currently raising money for the Alzheimer Fund. And, uh, if you would like to donate, links can be found down uh, below the stream. And once again, thanks to Kaspersky, Twitch, and Fusonic for sponsoring this event. Uh, without them, this event would not be possible. And now it's time for Etem running Fable. Good luck. Yes, thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Etem. I play Fable at a reasonable pace. I'm going to quickly just load into the save here. And I am basically ready to start whenever you guys are. So uh, if you want to count me down and I will go. All right. In three, two, one. Go! Yes. Hi everyone. My name's Etim. I play Fable. Um, first thing you're going to notice here is I'm rolling rather than running. And this is just because running is um, slower than rolling. So as we level up our speed stat, we're going to roll faster and combine it with a whole bunch of other movement techniques. So we're go basically going to be like Sonic the Hedgehog for the whole run. Uh, we're starting off by punching this bully here. Uh, we basically need to get three gold pieces to buy chocolates for our sister. Um, and we can do either good deeds or bad deeds. So that was a good deed. We got a teddy bear. We're going to give it to the girl who's lost it here. So that's another good deed. And then we will do one bad deed. Um, it's just the fastest. It's actually the second fastest way. There is a faster strat which involves just doing a bad deed and then just hero saving three times. But I am not going to do that. So I've got our good boy points. And then we are going to go over here to this guy who is cheating on his wife. And we're going to accept a bribe on his behalf to keep quiet, which we will. Don't try this at home. Um, so rolling down here, we're going to speak to a trader. He has a very fantastic moustache. And then roll up here. Now, because we've done a bad deed, these guards are going to be quite cross with us. So I'm going to try and avoid them, because if you... Yeah, so now he's going to chase me. Don't worry, he won't catch me. I'm a zoomy gamer. Cool, heading around here, we'll speak to our sister. Hello, little brother. Who definitely won't be important for anything in any later games. Um, skip this cutscene and now our house is under attack by bandits. I'm really hoping. Okay, there's music, fantastic. There is a chance that there's not music there and then the game just crashes at some point, question mark. So um, I'm very glad that didn't happen. Um, I'm sure Clean has taken a massive deep breath right now. So go down here, our father is dead and our sister and mother have been taken away and things are going all pear-shaped. Um, so we are being taken by Maze, who's not a traitor, to the Guild of Heroes and this is basically just the tutorial level. It's time to wake up. Here's Whisper, we don't like her. We're going to give her two punches. That's not just for fun, um, there is a strat later that saves a minute and punching Whisper is like one of the fastest ways because Basically, the guild has like a four strikes rule while you're here. So I punched her twice, so I'm on my third strike. So I speak to the guildmaster here. And we're basically just going to hit this dummy for a little bit. If we have any donations, now is probably a good time. There is not any donations at this moment, but I believe, like, I could... I could be plugging a donation incentive here, but uh, yes. I think you might know better what this donation incentive is about. Yes, I did mention Whisper. You have the chance to decide her fate in the arena, so at about the halfway mark of the run, uh, I will get the choice to either spare or kill Whisper. Um, I don't know what the donation totals are, but donate for whichever one your heart says. I won't hold it against you either way, probably. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. Uh, so yeah, currently in the lead is uh, Spare Whisper with $78 and Kill Whisper is currently at $35. So, you know, anything can still happen at this one. Yeah. Um, so we've got the Beatles here. Um, they like to mess up the targeting system just because they fly and jump around. So if I miss, it's not my fault, I promise. Um, but I got that. That was really clean. Well done. And... You can come out of the woods now. I would make a crummy Beatles are all dead joke, but um, yeah, no, that's in bad taste. Moving on. Uh, so we're going to become an apprentice now. So we'll be slightly taller, but still just as grumpy and you still just as rolly. So let's head out here. So normally, the, um, a strat we would do in regular runs 
is like there's a hero save strat we can do which skips a little bit of the segment and we wouldn't get stuck on those apprentices like you see there just because they wouldn't exist but um because that has the slight downside of completely disabling savings i thought marathon run probably not going to do that you can put that I'd much like to finish underestimate, thank you very much. So we've got Whisper here, and this is just the melee training, so we basically just need to hit her, be taught how to block, and then beat her in a fight. So I'm just going to roll towards her so she doesn't whiff her hits. And then we'll see how Whisper plays for this one. One, two, three, and then she's going to flip, maybe. Cool. That wasn't too bad at all. So us punching Whisper earlier is going to come into play right here. So this is the archery training. So it's going to say hit these three dummies and then see how many you can hit in a minute. So. One. Two. Three. And then we're going to use that four strikes rule to hit the Guildmaster twice. And he's going to say, hey, what are you doing? But then he'll let you skip the tutorial, so that saves like a minute. Next, we will learn about the ways. And then we're going to do the exact same here. So we'll give that dummy a zap. And then we'll give it another zap. Oh, actually, you can also hit the demon door. That's a fun fact. You won't see that in runs, but you can just completely hit the demon door and it takes it as a hit. So there's a fact for you. All right, coming up here, we are facing up against Maze, who's absolutely not a traitor. There'll be no plot points against him whatsoever later on in the run. It's all, it's all completely fine. But um, we basically just need to hit him uh, with all of our thingies. Oh, he decided to roll forwards. That's fine. Come One, on. two. Go on. You're getting better at this. And then we'll see when he teleports. Ah, two's not too bad. Cool, so we're reaching the end of the guild here and I'm going to start explaining it now, but um, there's a glitch I'm going to do in a second called Hotshot Glitch, which is a glitch related to the XP system. So I'm basically going to buy an upgrade, which is a Saturn Rush, which zooms me forward. But um, using the undo level up menu, I'm going to bug it out and essentially um, buy an upgrade twice so you're going to see this a little bit so buy that and then when it wants to play nice there we go so level 2 assassin rush and I'm currently in minus XP um, that was found at the start of 2019 and it saves a good chunk of time in the run about a minute so that's an Assassin Rush. You're going to see me use that a lot throughout the run um, in tandem with rolling because that has a very short cooldown. So rush and roll. You'll get the idea. So he's going to say, ah, there's wasps in the picnic area. This lady here is also going to go, ah, there's wasps in the picnic area. So sure enough, if we go to the picnic area, there will be wasps. So give this one a zap, this one a zap, and then we'll finish off the other ones here. That was the game, not me. Um, so, we've got the wasp queen here. Uh, essentially, um, most bosses in this game and like more major enemies have health thresholds, so after a certain amount of hits they do something so in this case the wasp queen spawned more wasps so that's why I wasn't just like completely demolishing her straight away is because like I could hit her until the cows come home and it's just not going to do anything at all so you just wait out a little bit for her to do whatever she wants to do and then you're all good so there's that quest done so we're going to head up into the first town of the game Bowstone South and we're going to ruin the economy just a teeny weeny bit so, I'll explain now the economy in this game works. Basically, if a trader has an item in bulk, they will sell it to you for really cheaply and you can buy it in bulk for really cheaply. 
and then they will pay more for that item because they suddenly don't have the item anymore so they'll pay a lot for it so you can then sell it in bulk for a very high price so using this we can basically make free gold out of thin air so I will show you this and try and explain it to the best of my abilities so speak to you hi mate so going to sell my potions for a bit of starting gold. I'm going to buy all of his apple pies, all of his grain sacks, a rod and a spade for later. I'm going to sell my apple pie and sell my grain sack and I just hit 2k gold. Um, I started off at 750 and now I'm at 2000 with money to spare. So here's Mr. Not a Traitor. So talk to you, hi mate. I'm going to sell my current bow, unequip it, and then get a much stronger bow. I'm also going to take a very short detour here just to show this very quick cutscene. She says, oh, woe. Um, cool, back to the guild. I really hope that doesn't screw anything up later. It probably doesn't. If not, I'm sure Clean can roast me about it later. But um, we're going to take the next quest, which is Altered Farm, which is... The first remotely challenging quest. Hey. So this probably here is one of the first maps which um, I don't actually do that much assassin rushing in because um, one of the mechanics of assassin rush is that you can either you can zip behind something just like that. But um, it also works in the opposite way, so if something is behind you and I'm targeting it, um, I'll rush backwards. And because the wasps are incredibly fast, it's actually faster for me to roll, because if I rush, I'm just going to go backwards. So I want to go forwards, not backwards. And then it may or may not happen here. We'll see how lucky I am. So we've got that bandit there. That was a really nice zip. And... They're probably going to chase me. Oh no, apparently they're not. Very good. So we'll come up here to Orchard Farm. This is basically just going to be three waves of three bandits and then fighting up against Whisper. Not for the donation incentive, don't worry, but um, if you do want to get your donations in for that, please feel free. So I'm going to one, two, three. And that's six in the top left corner with my combat multiplier. That's basically my combo meter. Uh, where are the... Ah, uh, hello. Took ages to show up. I'm basically just going to zap my guard friends here just to stop my combat multiplier from dropping. They took a really long time to spawn, which was a bit unusual. Since you mentioned donations, can I read out a few? Yeah, sure, go ahead. All right. We got a $50 donation from GG Butters saying Fable, smaller than three. ESA, <laughs> smaller than three. Item, smaller than three. Thank you so much for that donation. Thank you very we also much. Got a, we got a $50 donation as well from DP saying, Ooh, Fable, me and my fiance have great memories of this game. Donating in the memory of two grandpas lost to Alzheimer's. Go on. Thank you. Um, and also a $5 donation from Mod366 saying, No donations to read. Well, there were a few, but uh, that's not a good situation. Let's give Shadow Frost something to do during this run. Also, <laughs> since I accidentally misgendered Whisper during my own reading shift earlier, this goes towards sparing her. I really should play this game again, as I couldn't remember her for the life of me. I would highly so recommend playing this game again. But yeah, um, so I beat Whisper there, and... Um, I basically got a whole bunch of XP, that's why I was trying to get my combat multiplier up, was to um, to make sure I got the most amount of XP, which gives me the most amount of upgrades, which lets me go the zoomiest, so. We've got Greatwood Gorge here, um, I'm going to do a quick dialogue skip just by zapping this bandit, because he's like, oh, you have to pay a toll to go through, but... Give you a zap, thank you. Yeah, the movement in this game has actually become a lot more complex than it originally was, even though I'm always rushing and always rolling. 
for as many years as I have, it's like um, knowing when to rush, when to roll, and all of that is quite in depth. A lot of the um, the tech around this game is based around movement. So heading back to the guild, we're going to get our next quest. And we're going to buy a couple of upgrades. I won't describe them all in detail, but one of them will come into play very soon. Allows you to do ah, speed makes you quicker in both range. Magic power increases your capacity for storing mana. Uh, what do I get here? Summon. That's right. Cool. Um, so we're going to take a very short detour into the Chamber of Fate. Those of you who's not seen this run before, you're in for a treat. Those of you who have, you know what's about to come up. So we're going to go into the Chamber of Fate, which is a completely normal dome with absolutely nothing in it. There's just some nice paintings on the wall and nothing else. However, if I use my summon, position myself around here. Try that again. I position myself around here. And oh hey, it's the Sword of Aeons. It's the sword you get right at the end of the game. That's just sort of chilling under the floor. Um, so I'm going to just pick that up because why not? And we're going to use this for most of the game. Um, so I also need my summon here to change into a different creature. So I'm going to let it do its thing, hopefully. Please. Nope, I pressed the wrong button. Let's try again. Hello. Cool. Um, so basically the way that worked is um, I used Summon, uh, summoned it halfway through the stairs and then I used Assassin Rush to zip through it, ignore the stairs collision and then show up onto the floor. Uh, that was found in about 2016 I think. Um, and then yeah I need to change the Summon's hitbox to be something else for later. But uh, coming up here is Trade Race Court which I think is probably the first quest where People call this a challenging game and probably the last quest because it's easy from here on out. But um, we're going to escort these two trader guys. I see a escort. One of them's going to die. This guy has been bitten by a werewolf here. We're going to accept him on our travels and then kill him. Um, the game only really minds. All it wants is just one of the traders to be alive. So that will show up later. Um, if you have any more donations, please feel free. I do have one more donation to read out. Uh, it's a five dollar uh, anonymous donation with no comments, but this is also a good mo moment to give you a little update on how it's going with the donation incentive. Uh, right now in the lead still is Spare Whisper, but Ooh. Kill Whisper is definitely closing in with only fifteen dollars behind. Spare Whisper being at one hundred five dollars and Kill Whisper at ninety dollars. And yeah, reminder for everyone that uh, we're supporting the Alzheimer Fund and. It's the Swedish National Fundraising Organization focusing on Alzheimer's disease and other dementia-related diseases. So, yeah, donations, they for a really, really good cause. So if you need a little bit extra besides that very close bid war going on, then, yeah, it's always... They can always use support. No better reason. Cool, so I killed the traders there, or two of them, uh, to skip some dialogue because they basically go to the camp they banter for a little bit and then they come back so I just wanted to keep one of them alive um, also this spell that I'm using here I completely forgot to mention is Berserk completely broken spell probably one of the most broken in the game what does it do it increases your movement speed or like rolling speed it increases your attacking speed it increases your attacking damage you can't die while in it when you use it it will knock everything down in front of you um, any damage you take will increase the amount of damage you deal, so all in all it's extremely broken, extremely useful in basically every scenario, so we're going to use that quite a bit. Also, before I was doing about 200 damage a hit, and I'm going to, going to show you the power of the Sword of Aeons, so I'm now doing about 400, and that thing had 2000 health and is now dead. So if you're any doubt as to how powerful Aeons is, there you go. So coming up here we're going to finish the quest. I'm also going to take a very short marathon safe detour. Ignore the police car, that wasn't me. Um, basically because of the day and night cycle I'm going to pick up a golden carrot which changes it from night to day um, just to reset the trader stocks and make sure that that's all good for later. So I'm going to sleep in this bed. And then I'm going to eat the carrot and suddenly it's daytime. 
So when I was in Ballaston, I did a whole bunch of trading. I'm going to do that again, but on a much larger scale. So I'm at 3,000 gold. Remember that number. I'm now at 14,000. And if I buy and sell these emeralds, 31,000. 48,000. That's all the trading I need to do for a little while. But you can see just how powerful buying and selling is. Uh, Mr. Not a Traitor there. So normally at this point you have to go and pick up your next quest and do a stealth mini game and pick up a whole bunch of bandit disguise stuff but um, we're not going to do that. Instead using our summon we got earlier we're going to head over to this map here and hopefully get this first try. So head here, summon, try again. There we go, that's not too bad. So I basically just clipped through that gate there using uh, my summons hitbox, a uh, similar way to how I did with Aeons. Um, so at this point we're in a map we're not supposed to be yet. Um, normally there's a whole bunch of bandits here and they ruin your movement and it's just an awful time, but um, we're going to use this to sequence break the next quest just a teeny weeny bit. So if I head over up here, We're going to head back to the guild and hopefully... Oh, guild please, thank you. Uh, I forgot to mention the those glowy things are teleport points, so I'm basically just teleporting around the map. So um, another thing early on in the run was map management, um, but just making sure that you are at the right map. If you need to teleport, make sure you go to the closest one, etc, etc. So we're going to start the quest at the halfway mark. We never technically started the quest, but we're now on the quest. So. Hopefully I get this clip in good time. There we go, first try, nice and easy. So I'm going to pick up an Ages of Wheel Potion right here. That basically gives you a thousand XP times your multipliers, so we're going to use that when we have the most amount of XP we can. We don't need a pass to get in here. Just clip through. Just gonna quickly kill my summon to reset the timer. Get this Ages of Might potion and we're going to fight up against Twinblade. He's um, big scary boss. His gimmick is that um, he can't really be properly damaged until his, he jams his swords into the ground. So um, we're going to use Berserk to damage boost ourselves to do enough damage to um, kill him in a very quick amount of time. So before we was doing about 200 to 400 damage a hit and I will show you how much damage we're doing in a second. He basically just operates on a timer so I can just sort of keep doing this and he doesn't seem to mind. Oop. Uh, berserk. And then we're just basically going to tank a bunch of hits. And we just did about 2000 damage. Uh, that's our sister, she's now gone blind because of the big bad enemy of the game, Jack of Blades. But we're going to make our way out. Ooh, that is probably not good. Um, I think this is a big kid glitch. Yes it is. Um, so the next autosave, I'm going to quickly restart the game. This is for your guys sake, it will take just a minute. So the game is autosaving, I'm going to quickly Alt F4, hope nothing breaks. Cool. Can I read out a few more donations? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Perfect time. All right, great. Uh, we got a $20 donation from username Niels saying, I love this game. You could take an apple seed, plant it anywhere, and later in the game it would be an apple tree. And you could carve <laughs> your name into it, and it would still have the carving as an adult tree. Thank you so much for that donation. And we also have a $125 donation from cool. Reeker911 saying, greetings from the AU. Glad to be supporting this charity, Arts. Thanks so much for the donations. Really, really Thank you very much. much appreciated. 
Yeah, that um, that first donation was in reference to a well-known um, claim uh, in the early 2000s before the game came out by Mr. Peter Molyneux, who said you can plant an apple tree and you can plant an acorn and watch it grow in real time. Spoiler alert: you cannot. Um, I broke those bushes on the right there um, for later. You'll see in like 40 minutes or something. Um, we've got a rock troll here. He doesn't. Like, the game really insists on you killing him, but you can just kind of walk past him and doesn't seem to mind, so... Um, normally, what we have to do is here, we have to spell out this demon door's names in the stones. Um, his name is Hits. If you try and use the other four-letter word with the same um, letters, uh, two barbarians come and attack you, but instead we can just clip through, so we don't need to worry about that. Um, so just like uh, what I was doing with Orchard Farm, I'm basically heading to the next map first just because the next quest takes place there, so rather than having to backtrack and go through all those maps again, it just means I only have to take this trip once, so saves time in the long run, so just heading through here. The next map can be a little bit annoying just because um, there's a lot of R&D based around enemy and trader placement, so I'm going to take this path here. Ignore these traders, they're having a lovely old time. They also really terrified me. That's another side effect of Berserk is that everything becomes really terrified of you. Um, which kind of messes with movement a little bit. We've got a nymph there and you can see that red dot on the map just completely zooming across the map. Um, so they're pretty annoying. But um, we can just kind of roll past them and be okay. So heading back to the guild. Uh, this is the village of Nuthole Glade. It's under attack by a barbarian, so its gates are barred, but we can go back to the guild and there's a quest card to help them. Thank you, Goldmaster. I just said that. Um, we're also going to power up our bow a little bit. We bought a master longbow a little bit earlier. So we're going to increase our bow's damage. Um, so heading over to Nuthole Glade. So we just need to attack these uh, four Balverines at the start of the um, map here. Uh, they spawn based on position, so when you look away, the next one will spawn. So look away, he shows up. Next one's going to spawn over there, so I'm going to do that. And here's the White Balverine, which is the main enemy of this quest. Um, we basically just need to hit it 10 times with anything, it just so happens that lightning is the fastest thing we have right now, so... Just attack it 10 times, I'm going to do a slight strat here... Oh, hello. Um, I'm basically going to attack him with multi-strike just to animation cancel him a little bit. Uh, it skips his howling, it will, it would have skipped his howling animation if I wasn't washed up, but we'll get him next time. Just zap him 10 times, same as before. So now we've got a silver augmentation, that's going to be super handy, it does 6 times the normal damage against the white balverine, so we're going to do just a teeny weeny bit more damage. So 1, 2, 3, and then hit him with a multi-strike. And then we can head to Witchwood Lake, which is where he will be sitting, and then we can just finish him off there. I'm also going to put on my shield. Uh, so that's physical shield. Um, essentially, that just means that any damage you take will be taken out of your magic pool instead. But most importantly, um, it means that your combat multiplier doesn't drop, which is extremely important for quests like these. Also, I remember what I forgot to do, and I'm going to do right now. Uh, one sec. Du -du -du. I know Clean is probably screaming at me. There we go. Moving on. Um, so we're going to just attack these Balverines here. Uh, 
Oh, I didn't quite do enough damage there, that's okay. Cool, so we've got our damage, we, um, we've killed the White Bowerine, we used our potions, and now we're going to head back to Not Whole Glade to finish off this quest. While you do that, can I come in? For yeah, sure, go ahead. All right. First of all, I would like to say that we're actually getting close to that $5,000, only Ooh. slightly over $200 left. So that's really, really amazing so far. Uh, and because we got some extra donations, we got a $5 anonymous donation with no comment. And we Thank also you. have a $15 donation from Clean Sarah saying, hey. get the guy in the front row dab. <laughs> On a serious note, good luck, Atem, and much love from the Fable Boys. Smiley face. Thank Thanks you. Thanks so much. Big shout outs to the Eurodab. Um, those of you out there may or may not know what I'm talking about. Um, so, I'm going to buy a few upgrades here using all our newfangled XP. So, I'm now going to use the Hotshot Clip that I used earlier. So, now I've maxed out in Flame, which is super useful. And now I've also got another level of multi-strike, which is also very useful. So um, that just saves about 60,000 XP. So it's going to make the next quest, which is the arena, very, very, um, very, very free, let's say. I won't say easy, but we'll say free. Um, I'll still find a way to screw it up, don't worry. But um, the, the arena here is where you can choose to either spare or kill Whisper. There's about 10 minutes left, so don't worry, you can still... Open that donation link, hurriedly type in your credit card number and the three wacky digits on the back and everything to get those donations in. But um, we'll just head over here. One of the spells we bought is Force Push. This is an extremely useful spell. Um, if there's a trader here, I'll show you what it does. There's not. But basically, it does what it says on the tin. It does like a push of energy, which knocks enemies back, which is super useful for like crowd control and movement. It means that you can like free up some room to assassin rush it also has another unintended effect which you will see in the arena coming up here soon actually i'm going to take a quick detour here come to the right place. budget is now a very happy man i decided to buy that title um so this guy here is going to be like oh yes he can enter the arena and now there's a minute waiting timer so Welcome there's a few the ways we can fill that time one sec so Real quick, we're going to buy some potions from this guy. Hello. We think we can do a special offer for you, sir. And a silver augmentation. This guy is doing blackjack. Let's give it a go. How much will you bet? Uh, double, I better take a hit. No, nope. let's stand. You there we go. One win. I'm retiring now on a 100% win rate. But, um... I'm going to push this guy over here, because um, he's the guy I need to talk to once a minute waiting timer is up, but um, the cutscene takes place like over there, so I'm just going to basically push him towards there, so as soon as it's done we don't have to make our way up the stairs. Um, he doesn't seem to mind too much, he's having a grand old time. Yeah, he's having a lovely time. So, any minute now? Yep. There we go. So, here comes the arena. So, first round is going to be wasps. So, this is the other side effect of force push, is that not only does it damage alive enemies, it also damages dead enemies. So, you can see my combat multiplier in the corner going absolutely nuts. Um, we're going to use that throughout the arena to get as much XP as we possibly can. So we just passed our previous best for combat multiplier and it's only going to go up from here. And then round two is going to be Hobbs. Um, we're basically going to try and get as many of them in um, a smaller radius as possible to try and get them all in one kill. So let's see. 
There we go. That's the first one. Very clean. Uh, that's the power of Inflame 4, by the way. That's why we did that hot shot glitch earlier to get that XP, is because it has a massive area of effect and it does a whole bunch of damage, which is super useful for maps like this where there's lots of enemies and you need to be doing a very high amount of damage. And last round coming up here. Is this guy dead? Not yet. Now he is. So Whisper is going to show up here and she's going to be quote unquote helping us for the rest of the arena. And just one quick reminder, you can choose to uh, for me to kill her later on in the arena. So I'm guessing they're probably closing up on each other, getting quite close. So do definitely get those donations in. Want me to give a bit of an update on that? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. All right. First things first, I want to say that we got a $50 donation from username Niels saying, Atom forgot to mention the most important part of S.H.I.E.L.D. It keeps your beautiful phrase from accumulating ugly scars. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. And yeah, for the bit war currently in the lead is Spare Whisper with $140. And Kill Whisper is falling a bit behind again with $90. So about it's $50 behind. Uh, but, you know, there's still a few minutes left. You can snipe it if you really don't want to see Whisper, you know. Now's your chance to do it. Yeah. Thanks, Frosty. Um, this is the power of two silver augmentations, so that's 3,000 damage, that's the first White Valverine dead. That's another 3,000, that's the other White Valverine dead. You saw how long it took me to kill one of them earlier, so um, rather broken. Whisper's having a grand old time here. So next round is the undead. This is probably one of the most annoying ones just because of how slow the undead are, so if you make a mistake you have to wait for them to get back up and it's awful. Or if Whisper alternatively decides to steal your kill, like she is doing here. Cool, that's not too bad. So I'm going to kill that one. I'm also going to do a little bit of this. Just some su summon spang to build up my XP a little bit. Um, nowadays we don't have to do it nearly as much as we used to, but um, I'm still going to do it a little bit just for you know, marathon safety and all that. So next wave is the bandits, so... Just gonna kill them real quick. Ooh, that's probably not good. Thanks, Whisper. Being as helpful as ever. Nope, you're not dead yet. Now you are. Cool, thanks. Cool, so this is potentially one of the most satisfying waves, depending on if I play my cards right. So all these guys are going to run up to me, so I'm going to go one, two, three. Are they all dead? All but two. Oh. Good night and good night, thank you. If you're really good and they all get in a circle, you can kill them all like instantly and it's insane, but um, unfortunately we weren't fortunate enough for that. Uh, I also am really keeping an eye on my mana just because if it runs out and I take a hit, I'm going to lose all of that combat multiplier, which is less than ideal. Come on. Also, I forgot to mention, I'm talking to Whisper here, it's the only use she has in the arena, to skip the announcer's dialogue a little bit. Um, just by talking to her, it just immediately finishes it. Ooh, that is not ideal at all. Um, I'm basically damage boosting myself uh, on the 
um, what's it called, the spinning blades there just because they do like four damage, four hits at once. But um, for some reason, once in a blue moon, they will decide to do double the damage they normally do. So I've lost most of my multiplier, but that's okay. I should still be able to recover. Fingers crossed. Hopefully. We'll find out. So I'm going to damage my boost myself again here. Two. Three. Uh, just while he's doing that, I'm going to do one more quick damage boost. Cool. So that's the Rock Trolls done, and we're coming up to the second last round of the arena here, which is the Arachnox. So uh, I'd say probably in about a minute or so, you'll probably want to close off that um, donation goal and find out who won, because after that it will be the Whisper fight. So, just attack him here real quick. Uh, what I'm going to do real quick is do that and that. Cool, so yeah, if we find out, I'm guessing that uh, Spare Whisper won that incentive, but if there was any last minute updates, let me know, because it's going to happen in the next minute or so. Alright, then I'll make sure that the incentive gets close now. It is indeed Spare Whisper. Cool. Spare Whisper got $140, in, and Kill Whisper ended up being at $90. Everyone, thanks so much for all your generous donations for this incentive, and yeah, keep on donating. We're close to 5000 Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, you decide to s uh, save the estimate rather than that's the real winner not whisper but the estimate Let's do some... so we have two winners. we're gonna start the first part of the fight oh ooh. uh what's happened there ah i know what's happened cool so attack her once Oh, what are you doing? Okay, cool. That's fine. So now we're going to to spare her. Uh, you can kill her there. It costs about 30 seconds, but obviously spare one, so we're not going to do that. Now here's Whisper's brother Thunder. He's less than happy, but we'll deal with him later. Cool, so we're now in the second half of the game. Welcome. Um, this is where we're basically going to become extremely powerful, extremely broken, and most things are going to die in a single hit. And we're basically just going to finish off the uh, story, all the plot points, tie them all up nicely, and then like that. So here's our sister, she gives us some plot, we don't have to worry about that. We're going to head back to the guild and get a few more upgrades, so let's get rid of you and you. Cool, while we're getting, uh, I'm getting those upgrades, if you do want to read any donations out, please feel free. Don't let me stop you. <laughs> Alright, so I do have one donation lined up here. Uh, we got a $5 donation from the Fable Historian, uh, oh. saying the mad lad actually bought the name Arrow Dodger. What a legend! <laughs> <laughs> Thank Thanks you. so much for that donation. And I'd like to remind everyone that there's actually a few prizes that you can win uh, for donating. If you donate $30 or more, you'll be eligible to win a few Sonic uh, monitor, the few Sonic Elite XG270 QG. Uh, $30 or more during the event, uh, donated during the event, and you'll be eligible to win that. Uh, thanks to Fusonic for providing that. 
And also, if you donate $50 or more, you'll be eligible to win a Nintendo Switch. <gasps> uh, oh, very nice. Thanks to Kaspersky for providing us with that prize. Yeah, thanks very much. Uh, so I had to do a little bit of improvising there in terms of upgrades. Um, I am far below what I really should be having, but I can make do. I'm sure I'll figure it out. So we're going into Bowstone North. You can actually enter here early using a trick called Etta Mode. By the way, I didn't name it. I'm not that. I don't just gloat like that. Um, but um, there's a trick using trophies where you can use that to um, enter that area early because normally you can only enter by about arena now. But um, if you do want to, feel free. But cool. We just bought ourselves a few potions and the most powerful weapon in the game, the Solus Greatsword. Clean is now probably very angry at me again. But um, he's going to have to deal with it. I'm going to quickly turn on my fan because it is currently way too hot in my room. So apologies in advance. I'm right behind you. So you can see our assassin rush goes way further now. Let's get a force push that. I'm going to quickly adjust that so that it doesn't destroy all your eardrums. I'm very sorry. Cool. I'm going to take another short detour here, real quick. To get another golden carrot, that will come into play later. And then kill that guy. You can clip through that barrier, but because I'm taking the detour and because I'm very bad at that clip, I opted not to do it. So just like the last rock troll, we can just kind of roll past it in. The game doesn't seem to mind. And then we're in the last map, Prison Path. Um, basically all these minions, which are those weird like things you see. Um, these guys. Um, as long as there's none of them on the pier, you can complete the quest. By default, there's only two of them on the pier. So because we're a very zoomy gamer, we don't have to worry about any of the other ones, but in more challenge run, this is usually a big sticking point because you have to kill all these minions for the most part. So just kill these two and then you saved me. we saved him. And then rather than walking back out through the map, we're going to teleport instead just because it saves a little bit of time, mostly in um, loadless time, which is the main way we time this run, but also a little bit of real time as well. Just teleport and teleport back and it puts us at the entrance because there's only one entrance slash exit, so. I think up here is the graveyard where all good runs go to die. Um, this is an extremely RNG heavy uh, segment, so I'm going to hope that fishing plays nice, so. Um, as, as you can imagine, we're in a graveyard and we need to get four pieces of this guy's um, like armor, weapons and such um, in order to be let through. Um, and all of them are annoying in some way, shape or form. So we've got the Gravekeeper coming up here. Just over here. So we're going to pick up this. Say hello to the Gravekeeper. And then we're going to send him on a nice little sleep um, just because he likes to ruin our assassin rushes. So we're going to dig up here, get the second piece of Nostro's gear. Get the third piece right here. And then coming up is everyone's favorite segment, which is fishing. This is basically the most evil version of red light, green light you can possibly think of. Um, which also is completely RNG, so let's see how it goes.
you can see it's not going well here, but as long as the line doesn't snap. Sometimes you can get it straight away, sometimes you can you can do this. But we've got it. The line didn't snap, which is always a plus. But um yeah, that's fishing. That's the only required instance of fishing in the game. And there is currently a bounty on for $250 on skipping that segment. So if you do want to do some glitch hunting, please feel free to join the Discord and um, can help contribute towards that because we would all be very, very grateful indeed. Thank you very much. Um, we're going to just be rolling through this map because you can see the undead constantly spawning in front of us, so for the most part Assassin Rush is pretty useless. Oh, excuse me, thank you. The most useless cutscene in the world, however it's extremely important. If that cutscene doesn't play, we can't actually finish the quest, which is where most of our graveyard skip um, attempts have gotten to. So we just need to stand in the circle here and kill eight undead. So this bit is also RNG on how how they decide to aggro you and how they decide to come into circle. Luckily these guys seem to be playing nice. Uh, two more. Come on mate. Cool. And then we just need to inflame these guys. And then quest complete, jobs are good in. And now is the second longest segment in the game, which is prison. Um, there is also an active bounty on this for $250, more on that later. Um, here's the Kraken, hi Kraken. Bye Kraken, you've got his queue. It's not meant to be here until later, but we won't fault him for that. Uh, these maps are probably one of the most annoying in the game because of the undead spawning in front of you. Um, so we'll try our best here. I'm also going to try a strat here, which may or may not work. Let's hopefully I can pull it off. Not quite, never mind. It only saves like three seconds, so no great hardship if you fail it. There's another clip I can try here, which I have dubbed the illegal U-turn, so let's see if I can pull it off. It's a lot more difficult and a lot more annoying, but... Oh. There we go. I have now performed an illegal U-turn. It saves like one second. It's completely not useful, but it's fun to try once in a while. So our mother is here and she's in prison and we're going to try and escape with her but surprise surprise there's a trap laid by Jack. Oop. Open the gate, thank you very much. So as soon as we get to um, this next room here, I can't see him all play and we'll be sent to prison. So this is what is known as the pee break part of the run because there's a whole lot of dialogue with nothing else to do. You're just going to be stuck in your prison cell doing a whole lot of nothing. That guy there is taking a whiz. He's also got a sword in his hand and I would really, really, really not recommend anyone try that at home. I'm no expert, but that's probably not a good idea. Um, if you have any donations, now is like the absolute perfect time to... I would actually like to take this moment to actually plug some other incentives that we got coming up uh, mm -hmm. because, you know, we, people were super, super amazing with their Whispers Fate uh, donating towards that, but we still got plenty of them left uh, in the marathon as well. Uh, one of them that's coming up relatively soon is for the Valley Speedrun, which is going to be in about two and a half hours, if I remember correctly. Uh, it's for uh, to go suitless in that run. Uh, if 
that incentive is met, uh, the runner will perform a glitch that causes the suit not to load, making making it seem like there's no suit during the run, although the the power up is still active. So if you want to see that glitch being performed, uh, it's currently seventy dollars out of one hundred, so it doesn't need that much more. So you know that's one great uh, point to put your money towards too. Otherwise, uh, later on, uh, that's going to be for a little bit further into the uh, marathon, is for the near Automata run uh, for the risky coaster skip. If uh, in the in this run there's a there's a riskier version of a, a roller coaster skip that they're going to be doing, and you, you know going riskier seems like much 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 more fun to see in my opinion. So currently that's forty dollars out of two hundred dollars. So if you would like to see that, make sure to get your donations in for that one. <laughs> and besides that, there's a ton of other incentives as well, so make sure to look through the list to see maybe like you'll see an even more amazing incentive. Don't know what can be even more amazing, but I think there's plenty of options. Cool, thank you. Yeah, I mean, donating to the Alzheimer's Foundation alone is a good enough incentive, but the, all of those sound pretty pog. Um, so yeah, I guess I can talk a little bit about the prison skip bounty. So as you can see, I've just done a whole lot of nothing. I went on my phone, I can do whatever I want. Um, this is actually is the only reason why normally when you watch speedruns, they're done in uh, they're done in French, and it's just because all the spoken dialogue here is faster than in French. Um, the first thought was Japanese would be faster because lol, Nintendo games, but um, turns out it's one of the slowest. English is the slowest, of course. But French is the fastest, it's about 34 seconds faster. So just by changing language, you can get a free 34 second time save. I'm going to do it in English just so you could actually at least have a brief understanding of what's going on. So we're basically just doing this little prison race um, and we're still Sonic the Hedgehog. Also, um, all the other guys get trousers and for some reason we don't. We just get our Union Jack boxes. So I guess we're just really patriotic. But yes, the prison skip bounty. Um, we've tried a whole bunch of stuff. This quest is like insanely well built. There's so many factors that are stopping prison skip from being a thing. Like the only thing that would allow us to skip prison is by starting quest other quests. At that point, you've got a lot more than prison skip because you can just like start the last quest and do all the stuff you need to do. Uh, here's the warden. He's a fantastic character, by the way. So our reward is that we get to hear some poetry readings. That's not a joke. The cautionary song of the jail. But really, Behold, we get Behold, this code, and then we're going, because these books here spiral. have a key. Uh, the first time you always fail, and then the second time you're successful. Luckily, it's not RNG. Spirit if you spiral. you could imagine if it was RNG, and like you just have like a 30% chance of, of having to wait another like two minutes, that would be awful, but... Um, yeah, no. It's always you fail the first time and you get it the second try. There is an alternative strat where you can fail the prison race and then it will straight you, take you straight to the second year, which is where we're on now. Um, and then you can get the book first try, but it's only about 10 seconds slower. So, if, again, we call this the pee break part of the run. So if you really want to run off and come back, get a snack or whatever, and you wanted to have extra time and do the race, then by all means you could. Could I come for a donation? Uh, yeah, sure. All right. We got a $15 donation from the Fable Historian saying, Grey is the prettiest color. Oh, Grey is the prettiest color. For it's in her name, her eyes, and her soul. She makes me feel 10 feet taller. To see her is to lose control. She lives in the Nord, side among rainbows. Thanks so much for the donation. I'm not sure if that's any sort of reference, but... Uh, yeah, that's a reference to the uh, Warden's poems, his his lovely poetry. But um, we love the Warden, he's a good lad. So as you can see, I'm doing literally the exact same thing as I did before down to the movement hopefully I hope my movement is optimal it's probably not but we'll make do and then these guys here they're also just completely insulting our speedrunning abilities
So I'm going to try a little strat here. I'm going to try and roll in the cutscene. And I didn't get it, that's fine. Does this sound familiar? I'll expect his mixtape soon. So now we've actually got the prison cell key and we can escape. The way the prison quest works internally is it's actually like five or six different mini quests. So um, that's the main sort of setback of prison skip is we're basically having to, even though it all shows, it looks like it's one big quest, it's actually like five or six smaller quests. So that's why we can't just like jump to the end and instantly finish sadly. Um, but going into this map here, we're going to get our missing belongings. And also as a disclaimer for the rest of the game, you notice we're in nothing but our Union Jack boxes. That's going to stay this way for the rest of the game. It's It loses time to wear clothing, so we're just going to go without and people don't seem to mind too much. Albion's a very accepting society. But now we have our mother and we're going to head back through the way we came. You can see we've done a whole lot of nothing. We've gone to a map, we've waited there for a while and then we've just come back the way we came. So. Also this map here is probably familiar to quite a few of you who've played the game because it's um, one of the few maps that has infinitely spawning enemies. So what you can do is you can return here later and undead will constantly spawn and then you can just keep killing them for as much multiplier and XP as you want. Uh, can I click through? No. Okay, that's fine. The game said no. Again, it's a completely useless clip that maybe saves two seconds if done perfectly, but fun to show off if done properly. Oh, excuse me, thank you. So coming up here, he made a very short cameo earlier on, but we have the Kraken. Uh, so first of all are his, are his tentacles, uh, so we just need to inflame those, sort them out. And then he's going to do all his animation stuff. And then we'll just give it a few more in flames. Now, I may be wrong here, but I do think those barriers are connected to this thing. I don't know why I've got that um, thought, but... Oh, hi mate. You having fun? Thank you. Do you? Cool. So that's the Kraken dealt with. Nice and easy. It's being all dramatic about it. It's like, oh, woe is me, I'm dying. Oh. But that's prison done, yay. Quest done. So we're going to head back to Barrow Fields. And we're going to unlock the gateway to Hook Coast, which is the next sort of map we'll be dealing with for a little while. And this one here, just to activate this colour skate, all we need to do is just kill a bunch of undead for a, a short amount of time. There's nothing really much to it. Um, what I'm going to do... I'm going to use this golden carrot now. And that's going to reset the day and night cycle, which will mean that the shop in Hook Coast will sell potions, which we will be able to use. Oh. Cool, that's the undead down. So we're in Hook Coast here. So 
just heading down here past this guard. Where are you? Hello. 40 potions. We're at 85. That's more than enough. And there's a barrier here for some weird mysterious reason. And they're like, oh hey, come back to the guild, I've got some stuff. And then um, we're going to find that our mother is also being kidnapped once again. If you think that's bad, hear it in French. Shout out to Clean Sarah, by the way, he loves that voice line. Um, so we picked up this mysterious magical book and we're going to talk to the guild master again. So heading back to the coast. <coughs> and there's going to be a familiar face showing up here. Um, Mr. Not a Traitor himself will make his grand final appearance. Just heading down here. If you have any donations or anything, um, you want to update me on the status of any of the other donation incentives. Now's probably a good time. All right, thank you. Uh, I'd like to take this moment to talk a little bit about the Alzheimer Fund then, uh, because mm -hmm. I. You know, uh, the Alzheimer's Fund then has uh, quite a few projects that they are trying their best to support. And uh, for example, they enable training for caregivers on the subject of dementia. Uh, and But they also organize projects, camps and events for youngsters uh, affected in different ways due to parents or other relatives diagnosed with Alzheimer's. And yeah, for, I mean, for that reason, the Alzheimer's Fund then can really use uh, can use like every donation that they can, so that's why ESA is proud to support them uh, in the in their cause. Every little donation makes a difference here to make sure that uh, people suffering from the disease and people who are affected by it uh, can find a way to make sure that we can, you know, uh, sorry, words uh, that they can that's fine. deal with this. Yeah, Alzheimer's is a really terrible disease. I wouldn't wish it upon my worst enemy, so anything that will help the cause is by all means a plus. Um, speaking of a plus, Maze is down, so um, heading back to the guild, we're now going to start the Try to Stop Jack of Blades quest. Jack of Blades, by the way, is the protagonist that we... I don't think we've really seen him at all, but he's there and he's very cross with us. Um, I'm going to try a strat here. Um, so you remember those bushes I destroyed like 40 minutes ago? I'm going to get my bow here, I'm going to aim here and go one, two. There we go. Um, that's a trick called Jack's Hit. Make sure you put a space in between those. Um, basically, uh, Jack was on the other side of the map and we're just basically sniping him with an arrow um, to skip that whole movement section. So that probably saves about five seconds or so. And then I'm also going to do a similar thing here. Go here. One, two, three. There we go. A lot of these maps are very cramped and there's lots of enemies, so you can see the movement isn't exactly optimal, but I'm trying my best. Uh, another side effect of what I was doing earlier in uh, Greatwood Lake was that I've got one multi-arrow shot left and the last multi-arrow shot um, does like double the damage that it normally does so even though we've got a lower level of multi-arrow it will still be quite useful. I'm going to also take a very short detour just before we fight Jack of Blades and um, level that up a little bit. Excuse me, thank you. Oh, 
And last map coming up here. Cool, so we're going to again take a short detour to get some upgrades. Normally we wouldn't need to, but again, because that thing happened in the arena, I lost a whole bunch of multiplier, so um, I'm going to get... Come back to that later. Cool, that's all the upgrades we need. So here's a Guildmaster, he's dying but he's not really. Um, this would normally be where the original Xbox version of the game would end on this quest here, but because this is the lost chapters, which is almost like the director's cut extended version of the game, we're not quite done yet, we've got about 15 minutes left. Less than that actually. You can see the uh, everyone there looking at the timer and Monk essing, but well, it's a little bit less than 15 minutes. We'll probably be underestimate, it's fine. So we've got Jack here. Ooh, everything okay? Yeah, there's a very small chance, depending on your movement, that he can fall under the floor, which is very awful because then we can't hit him with any arrows, but it seemed he wanted to play nice today, which is jolly good of him. So, just one arrow shot here. Oh. It wasn't quite enough, I think one of the arrows missed or something. Um, so here's Teresa, this is our sister, we finally saved her and we're going to kill her, that saves like a single second or something. Um, we've also completely broken the lore and the canon of all of the other games from now, because Fable 2 and Fable 3 she shows up but now she can't because she's a little bit dead. Uh, I'm going to equip the Solus Greatsword that we got earlier and head to the guild. This is now the, the last chapters portion of the game. so. Just heading down here. The twin blade is seeking revenge for his humiliating defeat. The highly skilled assassins to kill you. Watch out for surprise attacks. Did I come in for a quick donation? Yeah, sure. Alright, we got another five dollars from the Fable Historian. <laughs> that's saying, could it possible that the character Maze is or could be in fact a traitor? It's been rumored. Thanks so much for that donation. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm not sure if you saw, but what I did there earlier on, so this is a mini game where you basically need to make all of them sun signs or all of them moon signs. There's a strat um, where if you block at the start, um, you basically somehow reinitialize your movement a little bit. You can see I'm moving in like on a grid. And for some reason, if you block at the start, you, um, you move a whole bunch faster. I don't know why either. Um, the only reason I know that is because I was completely stubborn and didn't want to learn the fastest solutions to these puzzles. And then when I did finally sit down and do that, for th the first thing I did was that I punched on one of them which messed up my movement and like, you can see I can only walk up, down, left and right, but I suddenly walked diagonally. And then me and another runner, KJ Freshly, messed around with it for a few hours and found out, oh hey, you can just kind of block and go a whole bunch faster. So shout outs to making an auto scroller faster. This is the last one here. I couldn't tell you what the solutions are. I just sort of look at them and just press buttons. If you also ask me up, down, left, right, I couldn't tell you. I could just smile and nod. So that's quest complete. And we're off to Hook Coast. So next enemy we're going to see here is the summoners, um, which un ironically you cannot summon under any circumstances, um, only the big bad enemies of the game can summon it, but um, they have a whole bunch of health and also more unusually they have a really long death animation where they sort of go on their knees and put their arms in the air and stuff, which sometimes we can skip and we've not quite figured out why. I feel like it's something to do with like cancelling that animation but we've put hours into figuring it out and we've not been able to figure out why so hello so you can see he's being all melodramatic 
We'll see if we can get any of them to animation cancel. It'll probably be like the least useful one. The optimal, if you are lucky, you want to get the last one to um, animation cancel because then that finishes the end of the quest a little bit faster, but we may not have such luck. Oh, especially not if I don't swing in the wrong direction. Yeah, no, that's fine. So we're now at the Northern Wastes, coming up here. And we're going to face up against an Ice Troll. The Ice Troll is a little bit unusual in that its, um, its uh, health phases are really, really long. Like we have to wait for him to attack us like 13 times or something. So we're going to do a little bit of AI manip, just walk this way. So you go, go one, two, three, four. I'm sure you'll know how to count, but count up to about 12. You'll see because the camera will move out ever so slightly. There we go. Also, sometimes you can animation cancel as well. We haven't quite figured that one out yet. Big question mark over that one. Um, there is a strat I'm going to try. I'm going to see if I can remember it and see if I can describe it in detail because it's a very long strat. Um, so coming up here. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to teleport to the guild, that's going to set our recall point. And right now I am moved in this position because I am now closest to one of the other exits up there. I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to teleport straight back. Um, so this map is still in our recall, so we've just been teleported across the map. I'm going to enter this ma next map here. You ready for this? You taking notes? I want Pepo G's in chat and roll up here so we're near the other exit we're going to then teleport and teleport back again because basically we're going all through these maps a whole bunch you still following me and now we're teleporting back that's teleported us to here we then get a cutscene. And now we finally teleport back. This saves five seconds of game time. It actually loses five seconds RTA. I just wanted to show that off. Um, speaking of losing time, Necropolis. This is another graveyard and another place where good runs go to die because this quest is pure RNG. Um, essentially, the graves are shuffled every time and three of the graves will have the correct um, tablets that you need. So, let's see. So the ones we're looking for are T-Fung, George W, and um, I Love It, which none of them are here. Not here. This is... I guess they're all going to be over here, question mark. Why? All right, there's the first one. So you can see I'm basically just having to check all the graves with a green dot on them. And you can imagine I can lose a lot of time here. One. Uh, here's number two. This could be okay, question mark. I guess all of the graves are really clumped together, so I'm not having to check. Like, sometimes they can be, like, over there. T. Timmons, big shout out to Ted Timmons, by the way. He's actually aware of the speedrunning community. He actually donated a few ESAs ago, so um, big shout outs to him. He's a very cool dude. Um... A, a shout out to a lot of the Fable devs, by the way. They're actually very, like, um, quite a few of them have seen Fable Spino. It's actually really cool that um, a lot of them are sort of still here. Oh, there's an animation skip, but not the one we wanted, sadly. If it was on that one, it'd be great because it would save, like, four seconds. So we're coming up on really the second to last quest of the game, which is one big quest that's split up into three. I say big quest, it takes like two minutes. But um, basically we need to get the three souls of heroes and you get the choice of either doing the good side or the evil side. Um, so the first one is the arena champion and we can choose to either kill Thunder, which is Whisper's sister, or 
do another mini round of the arena, which we're not going to do. Excuse me. Um, and then we can do the heroine, which is like a female soul, so we can either take Briar Rose, who's here and apparently important in the plot. Um, or we can take um, our mother's soul, which surprisingly is a good option. Where am I even going? Not whole glade, that's the one. And then the older soul, and before we used to get the Guildmaster's soul, but um, I'll explain that later. First of all, here's Thunder. So, one hit, two hits, and he's dead. So that's um, song number one. Sword number two coming up here. And uh, if you have any more donations, any last minute ones, please feel free to uh, go ahead. Uh, for now, not any donations, but I'd like to remind everyone once again that there's still quite a few donation incentives coming up, including the one for Where's my list? Here we go. Uh, for Valley, uh, currently $70 out of $100 for to go suitless, which is performing a glitch that causes the suit not to load, making it seem like there's no suit during the run, although we have the power, which, I mean, I'd love to see that. I, yeah. I wonder how this glitch is going to be executed. So, yeah, only 30 more dollars for that one. And that would get us really, really close to that $5,000. Uh, we're only $130 away to make that. and. You know, I think with like a few good donations, we can make that before the end of this run. Like, only a few minutes, yeah, absolutely. but I think we can do it. I believe. Speaking of believe, I believe Briar Rose is dead right now. So, um... This is the last one. This is the older soul. So before, we would have had to go to the guild and we would have had to take the guildmaster's soul and that quest would have been involving... Essentially, we would have had to damage boost ourselves about eight times using the RNG of the guards attacking us. We would have then had to kill about 15 guards. Um, there's an, a dialogue skip which saves 10 seconds which you can do but requires you to hit four enemies at once which is absolutely awful but instead uh, in I think 2015, 2016 I found a strat where if you teleport and teleport back we can actually take Nostro Soul and it's way faster, it's about a minute faster and saved a lot of late game RNG um, which is always good because we're in like the last minute or so of the game and RNG at this point is always less than ideal it's never good to have the run die right at the end so here's Nostro he is extremely weak his weird gimmick here is um, you have to kill undead and then he can be attacked so I do this I am flame he can now be attacked And he's dead, nice and easy. Cool, that's that. So we're now on the very last quest, which is Dragon Jack. Um, so we're basically just going to go into a map, kill the dragon, and it will be game done, jobs are good. And so in about 45 seconds or so, time is coming up, but I'll, I'll let you guys know. Uh, this last fight is actually, it can be either very easy or very hard. It's again, completely dependent on health phases. Um, the fight works a little bit weirdly in that once he hits a health phase, you have to wait for him to do stuff. But then like, you have to basically be quick enough to do as much damage as you possibly can. So I'll explain so. You can see as soon as I uh, he starts attacking, he can be damaged again. But if you don't do that amount, he will not be happy at all. Also, time is coming up in just a sec. I'm going to throw away the mask and pause jump. Time. There we go. 1.23.22 according to my timer. So that's um, that's Fable, the last chapters. I like to think I did okay. Um, you guys can be the judge of that. But yes, thank you very much for watching. I'll keep my outro brief. So. Um, so we can get the schedule back on track. But yeah, thank you very much. Big shout out to Clean Sarah, Cannibal XC, sorry, Noctiverse, Raheem, Zelda, all of those guys, all of the Fable community is great. Please feel free to go to speedrun.com slash Fable, join the Discord, we're all in there, we're all having fun. Um, and me, I'm Etem, thank you very much for watching. So yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed it. I think next is Metal Gear Solid 4, is that right? It is. Yeah, cool. So I'll pass you back to Frosty. Thank you very much. And um, yeah, we'll 
go and do that. But yeah, thanks very much for watching and enjoy the rest of the marathon.